Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mr. Chris with infotainment.com. Today I am in the 2020 Ford F-150. We're gonna be doing a cluster upgrade on this truck. We're going from the four inch to the eight inch digital cluster and then eventually doing the 12 inch full digital cluster. The install is a little involved, but it's not extremely hard. There's just a lot of steps to it. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around for this one. Let's get into the install. All right, I wanted to go over some of the tools that you're gonna need before we get into the install because some are not so standard. But for starters, you're gonna need some panel tools, preferably metal and plastic interior panel removal tools, as well as maybe a flathead or some kind of a pick tool for some of the smaller panels that we're gonna have to pop off. You're also gonna need a 10 millimeter, as well as maybe an extension, depending on what you're driving that 10 millimeter with. You're gonna also need an extension for just a standard quarter inch shank bit driver or if you got a long seven millimeter socket with a handle like a seven millimeter screwdriver if it's deep enough you might be able to get away with it you'll also need a right angle if you don't have a right angle you can get away with using an open end or a uh, seven millimeter ratcheting wrench with an angle or a swivel head on it just because some of these seven mils that we're going to have to get to are very tight uh, especially the ones up by the window. Because of that, I have a couple of magnetic seven millimeter bit drives that are different lengths. And lastly, we're gonna need a T20 Torx and a T25 Torx screw. Now, because there's so many seven millimeter screws that we're removing, I'm gonna be using an impact as well as an angle driver. And lastly, some kind of uh, a light or flashlight. And from there, we can move on to the installation. All right, so before we just go ahead and pull the cluster bezel out, there's a few panels and screws that are hidden that we have to remove first. So we're gonna pull our radio bezel out. If you notice, we have the 12 inch in here. This wasn't standard on our F-150. This was an upgrade of ours. So if you're interested in this upgrade as well, uh, we'll have that video link somewhere for you to follow and view. But this bezel basically just snaps off there's a bunch of retaining clips. So with this panel off, if you see any of these green clips sitting anywhere on your floorboard or in your center console, you're gonna wanna grab those and make sure that you put them back uh, to any that are missing. Because during this process, we're gonna be removing a lot of panels that have these same green clips and you wanna just make sure that everything gets uh, put back into the same place that they came from. Once you have that removed, you're gonna have this long painted trim right down the center of your dash. You're gonna need to pull that whole thing out and the easiest part to pull it from, I think, is right by the key cylinder. And that is held in also with just some clips all the way down. When you're in the center here, you're gonna wanna take a little bit of extra care. Don't just yank on it because it is real thin. You don't wanna snap this in half. And as you work yourself over to the passenger side, this side is kinda lipped up underneath the AC vent trim here. So when you pull it out, that'll just kind of slide out from underneath it. And we can set this guy aside as well. All right, next up, right below that key cylinder, you have your knee bolster here. I'm gonna pop the top part down and you don't have to remove it much more than that right there. Underneath your key cylinder, you have two seven mil screws right there. We're gonna have to pull those out. And this is where a magnetic bit driver really comes in handy so you don't start losing screws back here. And then to the left of the steering wheel, you have your AC bezel on the driver's side. You're gonna have to pop this out also. And this is just a bunch of retaining clips. And right underneath your cluster bezel, you have one seven mil screw right there. Pull that guy out. And from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the steering, uh, the steering wheel all the way down and pull outwards. And then I'm gonna lock that in place. And that'll give me access to the steering column cover. And this is attached to the, the cluster bezel. So we can pop this guy up and out. Underneath here, you can see how it attaches. Towards the front here, you have clips that go in from the side. And down the top, it says straight up and down. You just pop that out. Now we can go with our pry tool and work our way around our cluster here. And pop this free.
All right, and I'm gonna spin this over towards the center console area, and that way you can actually see the connectors that's attached to our key cylinder. There's three of them back here. We'll unplug all three of these. Just like that. Now we can set this aside for now. All right, now that we have everything out of the way of our cluster, we can pull our cluster out. And that's four seven millimeter screws around the perimeter of the cluster. We got one at every corner. And when you pull your cluster out, you'll notice one plug back there. Unplug that harness and now our cluster is removed. If all you had was the eight inch cluster to reinstall, you would go ahead and plug this in, throw your screws back in, and uh, basically reverse the previous steps that we just did to remove everything. This is all you have to do to get the eight inch in here. But if you went for the full 12 inch, the difference between the dash cap is very slight, but it's enough where it won't allow you to put your original cluster bezel back on. So because of that, we actually have to change the cap over our bezel and that actually forces us to change the passenger side so everything matches. So if you order this kit from us, um, you'll get the cluster, you'll get a new bezel, you'll get new dash caps all in the kit. And uh, this is where the fun starts. So this is where a whole bunch of stuff is gonna have to get removed and replaced. The nice thing about this upgrade is most of these screws are seven millimeter and they're all the same. So if you pull all the seven mils out and you go to put it all back in, you don't have to know where each one go. They're all the same. There's a few torques here and there, but we'll go over that as we start to pull everything out. All right, so before we go ahead and move forward, what I went ahead and did was pull the battery terminals because um, on the passenger side of our dash, we're actually gonna be pulling the airbag and swapping it over to our new dash cap. So you wanna make sure you pull those battery terminals just because we're gonna be messing with the airbag. When we're done with everything, we'll plug those back in and test everything out. But from here, I'm starting on the passenger side. I'm gonna remove the A-pillar, which is held in with two 10 millimeter bolts that are behind this little trim cover here. You have one up there, one on the bottom. Pull these out. And I just usually grab the handle, pull inwards and then upwards. And if you have tweeters or little speakers in your A-pillar, you're gonna to wanna to unplug that as well. We'll pull this aside. All right, and since I'm on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and pull our right side AC vent, which is just a single seven millimeter screw at the bottom. And you can actually yank it with your fingers or you can use a panel tool, but it's just held in with some retaining clips. We'll set that aside. And actually from the inside of this cavity here, you can see you have a couple of green clips right here. This is um, attaching your side panel to the dash. We're gonna have to pull that as well. So if you just push on the green clips from the backside, That'll pop this out or get it started. And then you can just pull the rest of them out and we'll set this aside as well. All right, next up, I'm gonna remove this side trim from our um, center console. So what I'll do is I'll lift the center console glove box. That'll help gain access to this rear lip back here. You can do it with your fingers or you can grab a panel tool and you just wanna push this edge outwards all the way down, that'll snap it out of all of the uh, little retaining clip fasteners on the inside. And then once you have it all popped outwards, you're just going to want to pull to the rear. There's a couple of little keys back here that align to the, uh, the dash up there. So once you get this out, you're going to want to do the same thing to the other side. Now that we have those side panels removed, that allows us to remove our climate control housing. And this is a series of seven mils at the front. You have a couple more holding that radio on, which we're gonna have to remove anyway. So we're just gonna pull all the seven millimeters out in between here. All right, once you have all those removed, you should be able to just pull to the rear and snap this climate control housing out of there. Once it's down, you'll gain access to all these plugs. Just pull all these plugs out and we can set this out of the, out of the vehicle. We'll come back to this later. All right, now there's a couple of seven mils up top and one stray seven mil on the left side of this radio. We'll wanna pull these out. 
and then we can get to the top of the radio because there's a couple seven mils behind the screen that are actually securing this as well so once you remove all the screws that's not it there's a couple more that we have to pull out besides that and to access that right up top in this pocket you got your little rubber pad and when you pull that rubber pad up that'll give you access to these two seven mils that are hidden under here and this is where your right angle is going to start to come in handy once you have those screws out this whole center compartment just lifts up there's a bunch of clips holding this on all right and then once you pick that up you actually have a harness or a plug connected to the bottom of this that you have to unplug before you can remove it all right as for the two hidden screws they're pretty much where your buttons are on the front of your radio bezel all the way to the right and all the way to the left right behind them straight down there's some silver screws they actually look very similar to the ones that are up here you'll need an extension and a seven mil hopefully your seven millimeter driver is magnetic because once you pull these out it's going to be a little tough to actually extract them from the hole there you go as you can see that's what you're working with down there you have one on either side and uh, once you pull those out the screen should pop right out all right all right when you pull your screen out you will have some plugs back here to make sure you disconnect everything don't just don't just yank on it because some of these plugs are kind of tight all right we got a screen out now we can move forward to removing the upper glove box on the passenger side and this is pretty simple to remove as well you just have three t25 torques right below it we'll pull those out And we can pull our glove box straight back. That'll free it from our vehicle and we'll set this aside. All right, with our upper storage compartment removed, that'll give us access to these two 10 mil bolts that are holding on the airbag. So we'll pull those two 10 millimeters out. Up underneath your dash cap, right behind this edge here, you actually have three T20 torque screws that you'll have to pull out. They're kind of hidden. This is where a right angle really helps. There you go. They're fairly small. All right. Once you have all these removed, now we're good to uh, go back over to the driver's side. We have one more T20 Torx on that side that we're going to have to pull off, as well as our driver's side A-pillar. All right, on the driver's side dash, we'll pull this side panel, just like we did to the uh, passenger side. And on this side of the dash, you can see we have one more T20 right here. We don't have one on the passenger side. This is just on the driver's side. And from here, I'm gonna pull off the driver's side AC vent as well. It's two seven mils on the bottom. And then this whole AC vent just pops backwards. All right, next up, we have to uh, remove this front dash shroud that's way up against the glass here. And this is just a bunch of retaining clips that are holding this on. So what I like to do is grab the left edge, or you can grab the right edge, and just kind of put upwards pressure on it, working your way down until you pop all those clips free. All right, I got the driver's side all removed. I'm gonna jump to the passenger side and, and pull the rest of it up. There we go. Once you get them all popped up, this whole piece will come out one piece and we can set this outside of the truck. All right, so now all we're left with is a bunch of seven mils that are running around the top of the dash here. You have one on either side, several up front in between your windshield and your dash, which is where the angle driver with the stubby little seven mil is gonna come in handy. It also comes in handy, uh, like I said earlier, to have a magnetic tip. And then you have a bunch in the center. Once we get all those out, these caps will just pop right up. So let's get started doing that.
All right, now that we have all the screws out, um, we're actually gonna start on the passenger side dash cap. This side overlaps the driver's side, so we're gonna have to pull this side first. So to do that, you have a little notch here that you have to kind of pop up right here. Once you get that up, the rest of this dash is held in with clips, so you can just kind of push up on it, and that'll pop it free. Now, before we pull it all the way out, there is a connector for our airbag right back here. So like I mentioned earlier, we already pulled the battery terminals so we can go ahead and disconnect this without worrying about anything. And now we can carry this guy out of the, out of the truck. We'll set this aside. Um, our new dash covers don't come with the airbag installed so we're gonna have to swap this one over. I'll show you how to do that on the bench. All right, and same thing on the driver's side. We're gonna pop this section up first and everything else is just held in with clips. And before we can fully remove this piece, we also have a sensor right in the center here that we're gonna have to disconnect before we can pull this panel out. And this sensor is also not included. We're gonna have to swap this over as well. So we'll do this, the airbag, and our key cylinder all on the bench now. All right, we have our dash panels out here on the bench. We have our driver's side here. You can see our sun sensor. We'll have to swap this over. This thing, you don't need any tools to remove. You just kind of squeeze the sides of it and that'll come out. It'll only go in one way, so you can't get it wrong once you put it in your new dash piece. Snap that into place. Now we don't need to use this anymore. We'll set this aside until we're ready to reinstall it. Now we're ready to swap over our airbag. This is also pretty easy to do. You have four seven millimeter screws on the sides that we're gonna pull out to get these brackets out of the way. All right, with the airbag brackets removed, you'll notice we have these loops kind of sticking out of there that are locking it in place. The easiest way I found to do this is just use a panel tool and pop it out. And now, you should be able to just lift it right out of there. Just like that. You have hooks on both sides. One is much deeper than the other because of the angle. So you're gonna wanna work from the larger end and then just spin it out of that, out of that dash cap. And to reinstall it is just the reverse of how we pulled it out. We're gonna stick the smaller end in first. As you can see on this side, we'll get those little hooks in through their slots. And on this side, all you have to do is push down until it snaps into place. Now we can come back here with our brackets, line these up, and screw it back down. All right, we'll set this aside until we're ready to get back in the truck. All right, and as a last step, what we have to do is swap our key cylinder over. So if you actually look at the two bezels, you'll see where they changed it and why we have to do all this extra work. So the cluster itself is a little, little different shape. This bezel won't fit around the digital cluster. So that's where this one comes in. But if you flip this guy over, we'll flip over the new piece. You have some T20 torque screws that are holding it in back here. Pull all three out and swap it over to the new piece. That's all we have to do, the hard part's over. Now we'll go and reinstall everything that we just removed. All right, we're basically just gonna reverse the order that we took everything off. So we're gonna start on the driver's side. Make sure to plug in all the sensors. All right, now we're just gonna throw all those seven millimeter screws that we took out back in. All 
All right, now we're ready for this long shroud that gets snapped in up here. That's pretty easy to put back in. Just kind of lay it in there and give it some pressure. All right, now we're ready for our A-pillars. Make sure to plug in your tweeter if you have one in here. And we'll push forward. And it might make it easier to pull out your weather stripping a little bit. Just like that, and we can pop our stripping back in. All right, so back on the passenger side, underneath where our airbag mounts, we're gonna throw the two 10 mils back in, one on either side. And then right up underneath your dash cap, you have those three T20 torque screws. All right, now we can slide our glove box in. And we got three T25 torques that are right below the glove box. All right, now we can snap in our passenger side AC vent as well as the end cap for our dash. All right, now we're ready to reinstall our screen. Plug our connectors back in. And if you remember, we have those two hidden seven millimeter screws on the back side of this screen. And we got our long extension. We'll throw these in there now. And the last thing up top here is our little storage compartment. Make sure to plug that plug back in. Snap it into place and you got two seven mils up here. All right, so since the airbag is plugged in, we went ahead and reconnected our battery terminals and now we're ready to plug in our cluster. So our new cluster is plug and play with the factory wiring. As you can see, we're already lit up here. There we go. All right, and as you can see, it's not even on yet, but you can see that full display is gonna match our 12 inch upgraded radio really, really nicely. It's gonna look really modern in here. All right, let's keep going with the reinstallation. We have a few seven mils on top and on the side of this radio, three of them actually, that we're gonna throw back in. Just because this one on the side down here is kind of hidden. And if you start to put the panels back together, uh, you may forget about this one and cover it up. All right, now I'm gonna put the driver's side AC vent back in. Snaps in on top. You got two seven mils right below it. And then we can go ahead and install our cluster bezel. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure to plug in all your key cylinder plugs. All right, below that key cylinder, you remember you have two more seven millimeter screws that need to go in right behind that upper portion of the knee bolster. 
And we can tighten these guys back up down here. All right, and you got one more on the left-hand side of your bezel down here. And then you can clip this cosmetic piece back on. Now you have this little, um, it's almost like a reverse Christmas tree type pop. That'll line up with that hole right there. Once you have that lined up, the rest of it will just snap into place. All right, and on the very left-hand side of the dash, you have that single T20 Torx screw that we'll put in. And now we can throw our end cap back on. All right, the last step for our driver's side is the little column vinyl cover or whether this is leather or vinyl, that little cover just snaps back into place. And you can adjust your wheel like how you had it and you're all set for this side. All right, now we can install our climate control bezel. Pretty simple. Just make sure you plug all your uh, all your plugs back in back here. All right, and then we have six more seven mils to throw in right below the the screen. All right, and we can install the two center console side panels. Make sure to get those, those little keys up front slid in to where they need to go. Just like that there. Once you have it in the right spot, it should just line up and snap in no problem on the side. All right, now we can grab that long trim that goes around your cylinder, snap that in, and just work your way down the dash. And then the last piece is our radio bezel. All right, and that's it. That wraps up this install. Let's turn on our cluster and see what it looks like. All right, let's turn it on and see what it looks like. You can see we have our Ford splash screen and our full digital display. Now this cluster has been pre-programmed for our mileage information as well as our VIN number. When you go to order these, make sure to fill out the cluster order form on our website. So as you can see, this is a massive upgrade from that tiny little screen that we started off with, especially if you went with the 12 inch radio upgrade that we offer. This is just the perfect companion for that. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the install. Um, it didn't take us too long. If you're doing this by yourself, you don't have a lot of experience doing this, you're going to want to take your time, give yourself a day, uh, maybe a day on the weekend to complete this task. But when it's all said and done, you have a nice premium cluster and a much more premium feel uh, on that dash cap. Either side, you have that stitching and it's kind of a soft, uh, cushiony feel versus just that hard plastic cover. Um, but yeah, that wraps it up. If you want to see more upgrades like this, make sure to head back to infotainment.com.